We did uh, the spaceship crashing into the Caesar's Palace, and there was that was kind of funny because Caesar's Palace wouldn't get any, give us any information. You know, we had to build a section of it. So I flew to Vegas, and I checked into the hotel, and they gave me a... I asked for a specific room in the section of the hotel we were going to crash into, and late at night I climbed out the window and measured the whole side of the building. They wouldn't give me the information, but I got it, and we did that shot. That was about a six a six foot diameter ship, and then for the one where uh, all the uh, spaceships crash into the lake, we went up to False Lake. We built the ship at Warner Digital, 25 feet in diameter. And we couldn't take it apart. The cheapest way for us to get it up to Falls Lake was to hire a house moving company that take houses off the foundations and move them, historic houses, stuff like that. Well, they came at 2 o'clock in the morning, and we put this thing on a crane on it, and we drove it up there. We were in North Hollywood, so about five or six miles. And imagine the drunks coming out at night seeing this flying saucer going down Hollywood Way. Hollywood way. But we got it up there, and we got a... 100 ton crane and we rigged a sling for it and we just dropped it in the water and did the shot did all the cutouts of the burning buildings on the back of the lake that was just after Godzilla was up there and they had a lot of dead fish in the lake and they had to drain the lake and literally scrub it <laughs> before we came in because we were in the water we did a lot of rigging to do on the bottom of the lake and everything so yeah Mars attacks was fun Oh, we did it a few times. I mean, it was it was really strong. Our hardest part on that was the sinking thing. That th that ship, when it hit the water, it probably had a draft of about three inches. I mean, we had to literally the whole offside camera of that ship. We had to cut away to get it to sink. It did not want to sink. We put a ton of weight in it, and then the water coming in finally got it to sink. But yeah, it was exactly built like you know you know ribs and stringers. We usually come up with ways to do it, to blow something up, to make something mechanically move, to get a shot, to come up with an adequate scale. A lot of people nowadays, you know, talking about the people in charge, the visual effects supervisors, there's some of your, your more knowledgeable, older guys that have been around a while tend to still like to use models because the advantage is, well, well outweighs anything you can get in the CG world. CG world does, you know, I don't want to harp on this. They they do wonderful things with character animation and and stuff. I look at it stuff that really can't happen in the physical world you can do in the CG world. It was one of those things where it, when that show came up, um, Richard came to me and goes, "Yeah, well, we've got some few sculpts that we need to do, and um, I'd like to do a brain, a giant brain." I had reference and did the uh, did the job, and it, uh, I I think I did it within within a week or whatever. And they basically bought out a nice series of train cars, showing all the wonderful work that that uh, we did and the uh, miniatures that people worked on. And then they had some other behind the scenes stuff on it. But other than that, you know, that was kind of neat being able to 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 do that and work on that film. And like again, doing work on that and having it part of the main focus that when you go into the spaceship, you see this. Brain. It was it was fantastic, and and, and didn't see it like I think you see a miniature clown in the bubble, and then it was a cow or something. Richard worked on the cow and the mother other miniatures, and and as the whole shot was done, it looked really neat, I and mean, it was fantastic. It was like one of those things where I, I mean I remember they they had stop motion puppets and they changed it into CG in that scenario, and I was like you know I saw some of the puppets and they were just fantastic and I'm like oh my god it was like you know I don't know what the decision but I kind of felt fortunate that we were working on the side of doing these models and props that they were going to still use <laughs> and, and, and put on the, on the thing but um, I mean as the whole thing was done the, the the CG looked great and I think the models really fit in with the characters and stuff and it, it worked out great yeah